my most cleverest little reindeer here, we are going to share our gluten-free, lactose-free, egg-free gingerbread cookie recipe for anyone else out there who kind of has food allergies and tender tummies like I do. You know, this definitely is delicious and it will save you trips to the bathroom and a few uh, maybe midnight uh, toilet campouts during the holiday season. So let's get a baking! This is Confessions of a Refashionista. So I kind of created this recipe when we were still living in Berlin after I was diagnosed with celiac and severe lactose intolerance and IBS and all these wonderful things that, you know, kind of happen as you get older, apparently. <laughs> and I really wanted to make holiday cookies, but that's kind of torture when you can't eat them. So I did a bunch of little experiments in my kitchen and just on a fluke found a fabulous secret ingredient, which I shall share with you pretty much right now. So what you need is one and a half cups of gluten-free all-purpose flour. A nearly a cup of margarine or oil would work as well, a half cup of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, as well as, this is where a traditional recipe would probably add an egg, but I have a fab egg substitute which consists of one tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with three tablespoons of lukewarm water. And then you simply just stir it all together. And it really does help to keep it all bound up. So for each egg that a recipe calls for, you want to add one tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with three tablespoons of lukewarm water. And uh, yeah, there's your groovy egg substitute and it really does work. All right, a splash of milk, of course, this is almond milk because can't have lactose. So use whatever lactose-free milk or even vegan milk that you prefer. I like almond milk. And uh, yeah, we have Muscatnus. This is still in German, <laughs> from Germany. Gotta remember the English name. Ah, nutmeg, cinnamon, and ingwer, uh, ginger. So you're gonna probably, I mean, I like to put in a few healthy shakes of each one of those. You just do it to your own taste. And now on to the super secret stellar ingredient, which is a packet of... If you appreciate all of the hard work that goes on behind the scenes and want Sherry to continue making fantastic free videos, then please do go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell, like and share with your online circles, and let's get everyone living a more rocking, refashionista, sustainable lifestyle. Because being eco-friendly, it shouldn't cost the earth. Pudding! Pudding! <laughs> and of course, you want to use kind of vegan-friendly, gluten-free, lactose-free, pudding. I love to use toffee and caramel flavors, but go ahead, use vanilla, use chocolate, whatever you love. And then all we're going to do is put all this stuff together and mix it in a bowl because you know what? That's the easiest way to do it instead of mix this first and that first. No, no, no. We just chuck it all in and go for it. You know it's a good binder, because it's sticky. <laughs> and our secret ingredients. Just chuck it all in. Just chuck it all in, correct. Just chuck her all in. Chuck all right. In. Now before we add the lovely nutmeg, cinnamon, and ginger, we're gonna stir it up a bit. Thank you. 
If you have a fancy mixer, this will of course go faster. We do not. <laughs> but it's also a very good arm workout. Okay, so you can see it is definitely starting to get nice and crumbly and dough-like. So now we're gonna put in our healthy shakes and then we're gonna get our hands dirty. It says sticky. It also could be kind of like a squishy too. <laughs> so now that the dough is all ready and mixed, thanks to my wonderful little reindeer, it is time to roll it out onto a lightly floured surface. And I've also put a bit of flour on my rolling pin. And while I'm rolling, I actually have my oven preheating to 350 Fahrenheit, about 175, 180 Celsius. So of course, now that the pile of dough is, uh, you know, flat, it's time to use our funky vintage festive <laughs> cookie cutters that we've had for years. And speaking of things that we've had for years, I highly recommend these silicone baking mats. They are, of course, more environmentally friendly than using baking paper all the time, wax paper, what have you. And uh, yeah, it lasts for years. We have had this clearly for a long time. I mean, they don't stay lovely bright colors for very long, but again, they work fabulously and nothing sticks to them. Um, this is not an ad or anything. I mean, you can get these at dollar stores pretty much everywhere. I just really love my silicone baking mats. So the first batch is successfully in the oven and uh, is going to get baked for 8 to 12 minutes. So uh, something kind of cool that you can do with uh, these fairy or I guess more traditionally angel cookie cutters is uh, make some really awesome... Yoda cookies, so this is how. So after your little fairies or angels are cut out, you simply grab a butter knife and uh... Off with the heads! And yeah, remove the heads. Carefully. <laughs> and then, you know, do a little bit of remodeling with your fingertip. And you're left with some pretty darn awesome Yoda or baby Yoda, or I guess Grogu cookies to bake and decorate. So apparently you can make royal icing using the water from a can of chickpeas and powdered sugar, icing sugar, caster sugar, whatever you call this in your particular country. <laughs> Though, I'm not really sure if this is actually going to work, but if it does, that would be awesome because, you know, making royal icing with eggs is not really that healthy, is it? So uh, let's give it a try. Um, I've put like three tablespoons in here, just a little bit, just to see how we're going to go with this. And the recipe I found said to kind of whisk this until it's frothy. So let's whisk it a bit more. Okay, that looks uh, pretty frothy to me. Um, I'm not sure if I should do more, but let's start adding in the icing sugar and we'll kind of see how it goes. So uh, yeah, that definitely looks royal icing-y to me. Um, I guess let's go separate it into a few different bowls, add some festive colors and uh, cut out some more cookies, get more in the oven, and when everything is cooled and ready, get to decorating. How totally awesome did our gluten-free, lactose-free, and egg-free cookies come out? I adore this recipe. I make it all the time because I can actually eat it, even with all of my little food allergies and tummy troubles, and it's just awesome. Also, I am super impressed that the egg-free royal icing 
totally worked and it also doesn't get super rock hard like traditional royal icing so you know you're not going to break your teeth when you're trying to eat those uh, gingerbread cookies gingerbread houses and everything else if you want more rockin' refashionista recipes, upcycling tutorials, and sustainable lifestyle everything, head on over to my refashionistasherry.com and it's all over there. Literally thousands of tutorials and tips and tricks and I mean everything, plus my ebooks, plus my refashionista boxes. Get them as gifts, get one for yourself whatever, whatever you're doing this holiday season and however you're celebrating or not, have a wonderful time and stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zigzag.